We have oh, sure. uh, we have four people voting. So we have one opening. Well, yes. so you guys can do um, the chair tonight, today. Okay. If you want to. Sure. sure. I can do that. You want to start? Yes. Let's All right. Go. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome, Welcome to the February 3rd, 2023 Long Range Planning Committee meeting. Um, I don't know if we have anybody online, uh, but our first item on the agenda this morning is to review the minutes of January 6th, 2023. Anybody have any comments or do we have a motion to approve? Okay, thank you. We have a second. Rick, thank you. Uh, so we can have a whole discussion. Is there any discussion? The only thing I'll comment on about what was speaking as I was not in attendance for no reason. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank, thank you. Peter. Thank you um, any any other discussion? discussion? Seeing the mo uh, all in, in favor. favor and all not in favor of approving it. I, I see that be in the Spokane extension. All right. Uh, item number two is to elect a chair today. Um, do you want to start? this autumn by indicating that we do now have a yes yes uh we do have a uh, council appointed ken johnson to the board as a voting member he is unable to attend today but he'll be with us next month okay um, i'm sure that everybody is aware that ken is going to the council i think it's going to be great another, another good, good perspective, perspective uh to this board so looking forward to having ken with us so, so, having said that, uh, in an effort to elect the chair, do we have any nominations or? Starting with the chair, I um, nominate Alan Paul as chair for the chair. Are there others who want to jump into this fundraise? Seeing none, shall we have a vote on that all in favor? Okay. okay, it looks unanimous. We have a chair. Thank right. you very much. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Allen. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I could just make a comment. I, at the planning board meeting uh, this last Monday, I was elected a continuing liaison to this committee. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Uh, that's good. That's, that's good. good. I, I love consistency. <laughs> so. All right, All right, moving, moving on. on. Item number three is a continued discussion to provide input on the commercial design standards as asked or requested by the comprehensive plan and implementation process. Uh, Autumn. Alrighty. And and I, I don't know if you can see there's 123 slides. That's just a joke. It's not really <laughs> an ongoing PowerPoint. I didn't want to scare anybody because sometimes I look at how many slides are in someone's presentation to garner my my <laughs> exactly. So uh, and I also wanted to let you know I am officially closing on my home at 10 o'clock. So I will make a hard stop at 9 30. <laughs> Um, and I think that today we are going to start just talking about some what we have existing and we're going to do the tour next time. Um, so this is more just a brainstorming. I, I really want to get a feel for what everybody wants to see in Scarborough and, and how we react to what we have in existence in the commercial design standards. So it shouldn't be a a and difficult, difficult lift, lift for today's, today's meeting. Please make it fun. fun. I don't know how you all feel about that. Uh, is it possible to um, um, make it like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, can you make yours bigger? Or is it to get to the this, this this slideshow? Yeah. No, because then I can't control it. Um, um, I sorry. I think you have a good one that has it open. Hmm. I have it. It should be down in the lower right hand corner, right? Yeah, let's That's your current slide. Yeah. Yeah, but then I can't. Um, no, it's working now. Okay. Well, no, I tried it and it wouldn't work. Sorry. 
Um, so again, just to remind you this, we're working on task one for our comp plan um, goals, commercial design standards, architecture, materials, articulation, fenestration, massing, design elements, and entry features. And this is step one and encouraging attractive mixed use centers, right? So this is what we're tasked with. The architectural standards, I sent you all um, this site plan draft table of contents to you. I know Marvin was really wanting to see how all of these pieces would fit in. I don't know if you had a chance to look at it before. But you can see sort of the method to my madness. This is everything we have right now and trying to make it um, come together in an ordered fashion in the zoning ordinance, pulling some things from the zoning ordinance, cleaning up the site plan ordinance, combining commercial design standards. So this is a working draft and we are legitimately just piecing parts of the puzzle together. And so the architectural standards, there's one, uh, one part and it's on the last page, but these are the elements that will be included to get it started. So today we're gonna to talk about materials and roof design. And that's what the goal is to get through uh, today. And so building materials right now, we have um, primary building materials defined. We don't have anything that really talks about accent materials or a mix of materials being required. We have a list of prohibited materials and we have some colors that are included. So uh, for primary building materials, the commercial design standards speak to uh, brick, clapboard, shingles, or other similar products. And then contemporary materials that have the same characteristics, um, cementitious siding, that sort of thing, those are allowed. We also have painted MDO plywood. Um, and then we, again, we talk about traditional materials a lot. We talk about New England uh, a lot, which I think is great because that's why I'm here. But we, one thing to point out, we don't have architectural metal is actually not included in this list. And so um, as we go through this, the goal is to find out if we are, if the existing standards are acceptable, if they're out of date, and if we want to add more things to them. Okay. Um, if I could just jump in for a minute. The need for this became apparent at the planning board meeting on Monday uh, <laughs> when uh, a sketch plan uh, for a hotel uh, on Mussey Road uh, was presented to us. Um, and the design uh, was different, it was Cabro. Um, it was Scandinavian, uh, white and brown slabs. I don't know, it wasn't clear what they were made of. We uh, were tasked with giving advice to the, um, to the, the developer. Uh, and our advice was to get rid of this design. <laughs> I, 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 but it was done nicely, I think. Very but, nice way, though. Um, <laughs> I didn't do it right I think they got the point. Uh, but I, I went through all of the architectural designs and everything that, that talked about the purpose of the, the designs. And they were all in place. Uh, so I had to pull, pull together an awful lot of advice from several different places. So. The ability to just kind of place like themes, uh, like topics together um, would be helpful both certainly for planning, but, but for the developers. So we, we will see what they come back with. Um, specifically, the language that we relied upon simply said this design is prohibited because it is coming from a company that is not from, from a franchise that is not New England. So we have to piece together a bunch of things. Uh, I hope they come back, but anyway. It seems to me that one thing we lack, for lack of a better word, is a vocabulary of how we're, how we're defining what you just said. The white brown is the, it was it. Was it brutal? Was it uh, mm -hmm. Scandinavian? <laughs> Scandinavian, that helped a lot. Yeah. But, but um, I mean, I don't have any answers other than I would suggest that we 
I think in terms of vocabulary that we can all understand a few half a dozen terms and and, uh, and I don't know how to establish that vocabulary. Well, I think one thing about that particular building, I mean, it was a um, tilt wall sort of construction with EFIS. So EFIS is like a thin layer of stucco. And you don't see it here. I'm really familiar with it. It's like what they do down south and everywhere. It's what you don't have to find. But that's what it looked like to me. And that, um, I'm not sure. If that, that to me it looked like slabs of plastic, but that's right. right. So, so, but then they did have some brick. Like, like their design, design met all of the standards and normal circumstances, right? And and I was they didn't have the roof pitch. I don't think they had a five twelve roof pitch because we have requirements. It sketch plan, so it yeah. really so wasn't, wasn't it super detailed. But it, I put in some pictures in here for us to talk about some things like that because it's hard to say. Things that are attractive are so subjective, but we all can probably agree on materials that we don't want or a mixture of materials that we maybe don't want. But that's what I'm really hoping to gain is like, what is Scarborough's style? Um, and, and that'll help me put these together. Because there's a lot of things, uh, when I was just you know Google, Google searching for images and things, there's a lot, a lot of things, things that I'm super familiar with in portions of the country, but then, then up, up here, here it's a little bit, bit different, different but, but then there's a whole movement i'm seeing a lot of metal and timber combinations but that's not particularly spoken to in our commercial design standards so just trying to get a feel for what we what we think is appropriate is kind of the goal of this so yeah. uh, building materials help but building mm -hmm. materials can be put into any kind of design strategy mm -hmm. um, to say you could have a colonial brick you could have a contemporary brick and so I, I would like to pull back on the building materials a little bit. It would suggest thinking about pulling back and talk about do we want colonial standards mm -hmm. on contemporary standards? Do we want what do we want and that way as well? And do we want to define a style though? Because, because that, that that's, that's the part I'm trying to figure. You know, if you want it all, if, if we, we like, like this on, on the, the picture. picture um it's architectural metal it has good transparency uh it has some articulation um it's modern do we like it do we not like it you know and that's sort of the discussion like for me to get to a style because you can't make um, costco is not going to be colonial right unless uh, we, we want, want it to be very specifically like so Dubai, arizona is a really good example with the only mcdonald's in the country that has turquoise arches they have specific styles now shall all match the uh, Supreme done something like that too because it was i remember growing up this the the aisle of mcdonald's in three forty and and they had to put a mcdonald's in with clabbered signing mm -hmm. with um, a roof that looked like it was a schoolhouse and gotcha. and and all that stuff. But but they got, got it in there, and if you go to the McDonald's, you can get a muffin with a drive that looks like we're going through a school house. Well, yeah. Um, but, but that's, that's very first descriptive. Right. Um, and um, at the same, same time, time Freeport used, used that to construct, construct a commercial district that felt like, like in downtown. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and I'm not sure they have the same level of description for other areas around town. For example, there are one quarter, which is more industrial, more more commercial than the farm. Mm -hmm. um, we're trying to move more gearing into, into the industrial zone. Um, and, and one, one question, question I have here too, that maybe level set for me, we're talking, talking about commercial, and I think you set it up well for talking about kind of encouraging mixed use development. Mm -hmm. that, that is different than what an industrial standard is. Right. So, one want to make sure that we're all on the same page that we're talking about a commercial standard, not a industrial standard. Because I think when we talk about this more later, we're going to get a little bit more. Sorry. The ultimate um, goal, if you look at the table of contents, is that each one of those structure types uh, would have their own perhaps design standards. Industrial would obviously probably allow less articulation, um, different materials, different roof lines, that sort of thing. But this is really the commercial mixed use. So Residential, we're not into residential at all. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. The question I have again is Is there such a thing uh, as a desire to have it look like it's Scarborough right. versus right. Sedona? Right, right. And versus even Freeport 
Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Although that would yeah. be uh, yeah. mm -hmm. I think, I think that's, that's what, what we're, we're trying, trying to figure out, out what, what Scarborough looks like. Okay. For my purposes, because uh, when I go through, I see areas that look different, different and, and I see things that are defined and um, make areas known, but it might not be something we want to replicate. But I, I, I take those points. I'm, just, I'm saying if we're talking about what Scarborough looks like, I think you pull back from building materials to define what that is, and then I'm at a loss. I I actually I'm on the same page as Barbara. I think we, we do take a step back to the materials at this point and say, is there a scarborough design that then feels is appropriate, whether that's cold, whether that's whatever it is, I don't know, whatever. Um, or do we not and we say that there are more open standards and that fewer what I, I want to think here, um, we don't talk a lot about setbacks or things like that. There's, um, this is really the actual building design. Um, uh, setbacks is, yeah. that's more. Yeah, yeah, that's zoning. No, no, you're right, but, but I think that feeds into this as well. Um, as we, as we think about what we currently encourage from zoning and from a commercial development perspective in terms of what's required for site parking, what that means for separation of buildings from one site to another, things like that, um, which feed through to, the, to that. Um, we don't, we don't have, have a, a, a downtown, downtown the way the Freeport has. Right. We've got a, you know, a strip a mile long of buildings that are packed in um, with another three blocks on either side. Yes. 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 So, so it's, and, and that's, that's that's a good point. point. If that's, that's what, what you all tell me you want it to look like, I can wrap this up quicker. That's, that's what I'm really trying to figure out. out. Well, that's what I think to emphasize. Yeah. We've got a site in town, which is the Downs, mm -hmm. which uh, has a commercial zone mm -hmm. which we could define and know that it's building from scratch. Mm -hmm. We've also got a site here at Oak Hill, which has been built a lot of haphazard, mm -hmm. you know, strip mm -hmm. all uh, um, tile st uh, style stuff. Um, we got Dunstan, which is a defined area, mm -hmm. which is kind of in flux and has been in flux for a while. Um, do we and I guess to, to crystallize that, and then we've got sort of the, as, as the planning division came up on the other, we've got the eight quarters sort of northeast commercial district up there too. Um, do we want to think of each one of those separately, or do we want each of those to look like a nice version of one another? So, so we want to have four commercial zones that are that, that are consistent and we define those the yeah, idea of a blank canvas to work with the downs, but we have standards to put all those regions. Towards well, just to clarify for the downs, they they've been approved and they're operating under the existing, so we're not changing what they're going to be able to do. Just, 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 so their design yeah. standards already defined. Well, their design standards, standards um, their zoning, they would just have to apply to what we have on the list now, and there's um, it's not a Good idea, or even perhaps not a legal, legal idea, idea to change someone's design standards once they're vested with their zoning and stuff. So, so we're not, not really playing with what they're, they're doing. doing. But that's an important one because yeah. that means, okay, we are, they're, they're going to build a downtown or build a commercial zone. I won't call it a downtown for political reasons. Oh, we'll build, they're, they're going to build a commercial zone mm -hmm. that will look and feel like something that we already know. We already know what that will look and feel like. So, so do we want to impose that standard? On other on the other areas that are commercially zoned in town, or do we want to have a different standard for those other areas? And as opposed to the word "impose," <laughs> I, I, I think, think we should consider uh, something that, that, that would allow more consistency. It, it, I, I don't know that the word "impose" just got me there at that, that one particular time, time and yeah, yeah, I mean, we're critical otherwise. But sure. it it. it um, I, guess I guess I would like to see if they have a different type of uh, architectural style, mm -hmm. that's fine, but, but I, don't I don't know that we want to limit anything at this, this particular time. time. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm concerned, concerned that I don't, I don't see any reference, reference to stone. stone. Mm -hmm. Right, there's, there's some things, things that are not and included. Wonder, I mean, you go down and you see a nicely done stone building. It's beautiful. You know, and I don't know that this concept of 
New England is the only thing that we want to just focus on. I, it's, it's been, been great, great to get down mm -hmm. over the years and see changes along Route 1 specifically where that architectural style has really made a significant difference over the clums that we used to have. Um, and, you know, I mean, it, it, and we only get a chance to do something like this about once every 50 years. So once a building's there, it's there. Um, but... I think, I think as we look, look at this, this I, think I think we should, should look and say, is New England style the only thing that is going to fit us? Because, because if, if we, we want to, to and, and, and I, I know, know the downs, downs is, we look, look at it differently, but that's, that's a spot where, where you considerably are looking at zero setbacks. And you're going to have buildings, buildings that are going to abut one another, yeah. and that's, that's a totally different style than what we do here. But wouldn't, wouldn't that be nice in a downtown area? area that actually, actually looks, looks like a downtown, downtown that you'll see no matter where you drive through Maine. I mean, exactly. That, that by that definition, that definition almost is a New England style. That's what Belfast looks like. Yeah, yeah. that's what Portland looks like. That's what. Yeah. Um, towns that are substantial in their region all look like in there. But also roof styles and stuff like that come into play, and I'm not sure that a flat roof is all that bad. Yeah, exactly. If you go down to Portland or go to, go to Belfast or go to Bath, you're going to see a lot of flat roofs. Sure. When I'm so conscious of this when you know, I do a lot of driving or in the Midwest, you know, <laughs> and, and I, I very conscious when you pull off the road into the town what the plan has been. You can tell in an instant here are people who put a lot of thought into it, and everybody knows this experience. And here there was no in, in, the, in the middle, um, maybe you're less conscious of what's going on uh, than on those two extremes. So, so I, again, I'm in the general ballpark. Are we talking about, and it doesn't matter to me if it's contemporary or if it's colonial or federalist. I mean, I like, I have my own taste. But are we talking about managing the attractiveness of a look place to the end degree? Or are we talking about doing it a moderate amount? Or do you want to just let all, you know, all that's off kind of thing? And, I'd just, just like, like to start in a very general way and then move as rapidly as possible into the particulars. So I have a couple thoughts, if I could share them real quickly. Um, first of all, I'd like to just talk about um, style is, if, when you say New England style, it could be anything from New England farmhouse, New England coastal, uh, New England colonial, it all has different connotations. So I understand what you're saying about style and I also agree with about having some decorum or, or some moniker of consistency, but um, let's, let's not forget like about diversity and how much that brings a richness to our community. And we have no idea what new Americans are going to be that move here in the 21st century. So if we only do this every 50 years, <laughs> we're not going to make us look like white red Scarborough, okay? And um, I think it's really important that we talk about the purpose of the building materials, which the building materials are really there to what will hold up in New England. And yes, stone should be on the list. And yes, architectural metals and other metals should be on the list. Um, in some communities, uh, they're, they're doing metal for, um, I get that uh, wildfires aren't an issue here, but sometimes it's, it's for wildfires yeah. and for other purposes. Now, the purpose of building materials are for safety and longevity. So I'd like us to start, sort of start thinking about in that perspective, although I really appreciate the conversation about, about styles. And it's really important, I think, that we talk about the downs and the fact that we can't go back. That ship has already sailed. However, if we add new materials to our list, like stone and metals, can they adopt those if they want? I think, I think so. so. I mean, it's, it's hard, hard to say. I, I, I think, think they, they have, have some, a lot of flexibility in the way they've been, been able to get some pretty cool things, things done. So, and, and I'm super, super confident, confident about how their town centers are going to pan out. I think we're all going to be really pleased with it. 
Um, and last but not least, I guess I'd like to say that I think a lot of us are drawn to the coastal mm -hmm. New England. Scarborough is a farm town, mm -hmm. has been a farm town. For, for those of you who are new to Scarborough, I mean, myself am new, but I'm from an agricultural background and I feel like it's been lost in this yeah. town. Community. Well, I, I think Scarborough was a farm town. I mean, I, I mean it, it, there are certain elements of it that still exist, but I think to call Scarborough a farm town in 2023 is, is a stretch. Yeah, because it was completely annihilated. And Correct, right. but we, it is completely what it is. annihilated, and we want to go down that path. And we, it, we already have one. I think, I think no, Robin no, has the point of no return. So, so I, I think, mean, I think, I think style, style is really good. And I think and Robin has a great point too about building, building materials. Because you, you can, like Marvin, like, you said, you can use any building material you know, to create any style. So, so it's really about if we, and, and I started, started with building materials because to me, that's, that's kind of an easy, easy one. Because it's like, like, do we like brick? Yes. Do we like stone? Yes. Do we like this? Yes. It doesn't have to, we're not talking about how it's applied to the side. We're just talking about the material itself. Do we like shiny glass? No. You know, that sort of conversation. So it's oversimplification, but it builds into once we keep going through this. And, and I, I get, get more feedback, feedback from you, I can, I can, I can start, start to see, see oh, there's, there's a pattern, pattern here. Everyone, Everyone likes a tripartite design, design, even if it's, if it's a different style. style. So you, you have this base and the middle and the, and and the, and the top, top of the structure. structure. Or, or we, we don't. don't. We, we all like, like you know, know uniform. uniform. So, so this, this exercise, exercise for me is to, from like simple building blocks, which is building materials, the roof line, and then that sort of works in the style. So I know Marvin comes from an architecture and an art you're, you're already there, right? right? You, you already, already know, know what, what you, you do with this. this and you're probably probably thinking, thinking about, about that, that too. So, so I think that's, that's a really good point to bring, bring us back to. Building materials are like, like the lid. Is there a consensus in town uh, based on, for example, some question in the survey from a year and a half ago that demonstrates what the populace here likes in terms of management? I don't we're think about. we had any design yeah. questions, but do you remember, John? We should go back and take a look at that, but I don't think there were I don't, I don't design. Yeah. And the last thing I'm going to say is that what strikes me is um, expertise, like somebody who's done this before in a town, uh, an architect mm -hmm. who can draw quick, quickly mm -hmm. what we're talking about and give us some visuals, I would suggest that before we go down the road too far, we might consider unless anybody has any yeah. particular. It would be fun. We could have some design charrettes and actually see, because I always think it's interesting. So if the town or city has some, some things to sketch out what that means, right? Like what you can get away with, what it actually creates. People are going to care yeah. about this. Yeah. Yeah. Aaron, I'll get you in just one second, please. Um, two, two things. Mm -hmm. One, the you only thing that bothers me to some extent is that I've been out of the construction industry now for six years. Mm -hmm. yeah. There could be some materials coming at us from an energy efficient mm -hmm. standpoint mm -hmm. that, that we don't want to necessarily exclude. Right. And, and so, so somehow, somehow we have to be considering something, something like that. Okay. The second thing I was going to say is probably going to lead into what Karen was thinking. Maybe, maybe not. not. Didn't we do something like this, Karen, when we were going through the comp plan beginning and the consultant that we had brought forth some architectural yes. designs? I think it was... Um, not as much architecture, but definitely setbacks, layout, how, how things look on the ground. Yeah. yeah. Um, which I'm, I'm sure we can come back and, and take a look at. I, I didn't know if that yeah. would play in. Mm -hmm. And that is close to uh, what I was thinking is, um, you, know, you know, in March, we're going to go out and mm -hmm. take a look at all of these things. It might be good to have like a, a checklist, mm -hmm. like, hey, we're going to look at this area think, think about, about in here, here roof line materials, materials you, know, you know just sort of we have a yeah. yeah. so what idea. are we looking at you know why, why are we looking at this right. and, and, and what do we like and not like and on our list i, I know we're going to have a time issue but, but on our list do, do we want to see something totally different from what we haven't talked about 
I think okay. so, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. There's, there's some, some things, things on the list, list I think. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. We're asking for things that are both mm -hmm. good, and good and bad. Yeah. So, and I think but I'm just thinking, you know, you know, there is there something in Westbrook? Westbrook or... So I put on the list um, the the hotel that was built in Portland across from a very traditional um, piece. And there was a lot of discussion at the time that the architectural findings at the planning board was yeah, yeah, this is not a traditional New England or whatever their standard was, but they reflected it through um, their window size and other things, you know, why it would reflect the surrounding pieces. And so take it out of the, the piece. It doesn't seem to meet the standards, but place it down and look at it, how it reflects the surrounding buildings. Yeah, it fits in. It's purple, which probably surprised a lot of people. Um, and so there was a lot of controversies. People loved it and people hated it. And so that, uh, I think that's one of the things we come up with. Are we we come up against is does this somehow reflect those that are intrinsic to the style that we're looking at? Yeah. Um, I. I when, when I'm, I'm looking at the, for instance, when I was looking at the hotel, I was really looking also at what was on either side of it. Mm -hmm. Was there a sort of a continuity? It didn't have to be absolutely the same of the same material, but did it fit where it was cited? But I think we might want to consider how we build flexibility for new products into these That was your discussion on clips too, wasn't it? Yeah, that, that we, um, we, we now have a 3D printer, 3D printer that, that builds that prints houses. It prints them out of Lava Creek, Creek or it prints them now uh, from Orono out of waste products mm -hmm. from uh, biomass. So, so do, do we want to put those, those in right, right now, or do we want to build in something that says we're willing to take a look as we go along at new products? And put, put them, them through, through some, some sort of a, a vetting, vetting process. process. So, so that in 15 years, years we're not saying, no, I'm sorry, sorry we still can't have uh, houses printed out of biomass. Yes. So, so that we, we, we can grow with these, with these standards, not just here's the list, 50 years from now, we'll take a look at it. That's, that's, a, yeah, yeah. that's what I would suggest is putting in some sort of. Um, Flexibility and then using maybe sustainability or something like that to sort of a, 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 a review yeah. process, internal review, review process that says, okay, okay this is this is a not and then we could just update the standards to include it. Yeah, so I, I, I'd rather be the opening, mm -hmm. but not allow it to occur without some kind of vetting process first, so, so that, that we don't. don't like it, yep. yeah. Yeah. Are you thinking about that vetting process as sort of like a committee, as a board? You said, is there something in Westbrook? Westbrook has a, a village review committee, so anything mm -hmm. that comes to downtown as a village committee about it. Yeah. And it, this is a good, like, like innovative, like an innovation committee almost who looks at it, sort of maybe it's a new style or mm -hmm. it's a building material, something like that, because there's we just can't even imagine right. right now. But I think that's kind of kind of what we're, we're supposed to be doing to some extent. Exactly. So, so I would use for some things, and I had this discussion a few weeks back with sustainability for LEED standards and different green building standards and stuff. So that's what we have in place right now. So I would probably recommend using that and maybe long range. But we don't have to square all those details away, but I think we have the concept, right? That we yeah. want to be open. And we can use the vetting process, and yeah. we don't have to make it perfect. Are people comfortable wearing this item? I don't know. Yeah. I think I have. Yeah. Oh, I have that one system. Yeah. I know what you do. The one thing I want to kind of make a close up on to say is that I think um, from a material perspective, yes, I think we kind of have had a good discussion. I think, but I still feel it is. Um, undiscussed, I know, or maybe something that kind of comes close to what we're looking at is the elements of the design, which are not material based, but which 
do go into the definition of what fits into what we want for a new town. Um, and whether the town is a farm town or a beach town or or a town town or whatever it might be, um, there are certain design standards they fall more into site design and siting and the rest um, that I think are pretty darn important and probably more important than the materials discussion. Um, so I'll, I'll leave it at that and, and, and say, you know, I think we've got a lot of work to do on that. Even if we all agree that the materials, we should be open with the principles of sustainability, of long-term permanence, of energy efficiency, as I said, um, those, those sorts of things. Are you saying style is more important than building materials? I'm saying that that style, style is more important then, but, but I think what I got from this discussion is that um, we're, we're going to have a, a more involved discussion around style than we probably will end up having around building materials. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. so one last thing, and I don't know if it's possible, but it's, it's always <laughs> interesting to see whether or not our ordinances have had an impact. And I know, I know we're going to go visit some areas, but I'm wondering if we can find some. Uh, photos of Route 1 from 20 years ago or 25 years ago, so we can see how things have evolved. Um, I'm not sure a lot of it's still there. there. <laughs> True. True. Maybe it's 50 years. Maybe. Yeah. 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 So um, I'll, I'll take a look and see if we have anything yeah. that helps us evolve. I just want to piggyback on what you said for a second, Peter. I think you're right. myself. But Scarborough is kind of unique. If you're in Portland and you see this purple hotel, I can close my eyes and I can image of what Portland looks like comes to mind and do it. Here. So I think we're almost making something from whole cloth. If we're and to not drill down on it means it's anybody's game, any anybody's guess where it ends up. I don't, I don't, I'm sorry, Peter, but I don't think we've, I don't think we've taken the style out of it, right? I think we're, we're having these discussions to get there. I don't think we can, it's hard um, for us to say, I like that, and I like that, but it's important to figure out what makes up that. That's how I try to approach it. Like, but the trees will be different in 50 years. Sure, sure. But I will tell you, I mean, if you look around, like, um, New England vernacular, the materials have been the same for the last 200 years, and that's what makes it so nice is the continuity of the materials. I know when I came here, what makes this place so much more special to me is somebody being from the South and all very franchised, you know, all all very much the same. There's no brick, there's no platform, there's no um, real, real space, space right? Like real um, continuity with the community and a place you can park. And there's no real, and it's all very um, forced. And so that would be more than anything. That would be something I would want to try to protect is that you're getting real style and you're not like forcing it. Um, and that's, yeah. 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 And, and, I think we're talking about chicken and egg a little bit. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I think so. so. Yeah, I guess yeah. 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 I think it all fits it's together. Rick was trying to say something. something. As we um, work our way through this discussion, we're looking at the design standards themselves. I do recall that the board ruled back in 2001. Um, the initial section is entitled Site Planning Goals. Mm -hmm. And then the second section is General Site Planning Principles. Probably would be a good idea if we carefully review those two sections to see if they need to be rethought of what have you as we go through this yeah. more detailed discussion. Well, it's all going to be. Um... Versus what? The first, if you. If you the original design standards, and they were amended in 2009. I don't know what the amendments were. I think they turned them into what? In any event, yeah. the first two sections that are entitled Site Planning Goal, and then the, and, and site, General Site Planning Principles. My, my recollection is we were trying to get a handle on this idea of 
what is Scarborough? Mm -hmm. What is Scarborough? Mm -hmm. What is the design we want to have? Um, and I'm just suggesting we got to look at that pretty carefully um, as we go through this more detailed discussion about appearance and the like. I, I believe yeah. I quoted those on Monday. <laughs> Peter was trying to finish yeah, up. There's, 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 a, there's a definition yeah. of term. There's a definitional section, then there's the general site plan goal, then a site planning principle, and then the rest of the standards really get into more details. And the like. And my recollection is we were trying to do this to give a developer, what have you, some guidance as to what planning board was looking at. And I'm just I'm suggesting that we are. Well, rather than more than just looking at the site plan ordinance, we ought to be looking carefully at the design standards to see whether they need. That's what well, we're we're going to look at all of them. Yeah, yeah. we're going to be here a long time. <laughs> you, trying to finish your comment. Yeah, um, and, and, there, and first off, like Autumn, I think circulated those a few months, two or three months, mm -hmm. um, and um, and I remember going through them and, and, and thinking, wow, wow. This is very yeah. interesting. Standards and principles, and then if you look at what is actually implemented in the back, it kind of doesn't do any of those. Activities. Anyway, that's a separate conversation. We'll, we'll deal with that as we go through this. But one thing I said is, is, and I've observed this having grown up next to Scarborough and grown up uh, sort of the Kate Scarborough rivalry sort of thing. Kate was easy to define, it was old money beach, town, old money, uh, a, a, a coastal town. Um, Wasty, whatever you want to call it, but it was it was Cape was Cape. Scarborough was a bunch of buildings, and each one was different. You had Higgins Beach, you had West Scarborough, and that Dunstan Corner, um, and you had that Oak Hill, which had was strong, and that Pleasant Hill, which was a nice suburban community. Uh, I think, uh, it, yeah, you've got, but the problem that I think we emerge here is that we're now trying to define a single Scarborough um, out of those seven or eight villages that had their own personality but weren't actually their own towns. And geographically, we're very large. Well right, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, and on top of which, we've got this great natural resource, the marsh in the middle, and the wetlands and the sort of feed areas that we want to preserve. And therefore, we kind of keep those separate on a certain The little villages separate. Are you suggesting that we have? Six or seven. I'm not I'm suggesting that. I think what I think that's what we that's the to your point. The law that we come to has those six or seven geographies pre -defined. We can define a single standard to unify all of this, um, which would then impose a standard which doesn't currently exist on West Scarborough or on Higgins Beach or wherever it might be. Um, or we can think about that potentially as okay, this is the beach. The beach, beach design, design standard. This is the rural design standard. Um, and, and for our emerging downtowns, um, this is what we're going to impose on Oak Hill going forward and Dunstan going forward because we want the ball of the education around the signs that are emerging in, in the downs. So I don't know where we go with that. I think we should remind ourselves that that's unfortunate or not unfortunate. That's part of what Scarborough is. I think it's really combined. We redid. Higgins Beach, we, we did, did a whole character-based mm -hmm. design mm -hmm. process. So, so I guess if we're going, going down that road, road do, do we want to have something like that mm -hmm. for, for the, the different, different, I call them hamlets, but of, of the town? town. Uh, and does that, that make any sense? sense? We we could perhaps have an overarching kind of the basic guidelines, right? Like, like these are the materials, these are the roof lines, and you have to do these basic things for design. But then each village could have its own unique style. Yeah. And that's, that's where it's more important. important. It's the style sort of comes in. Right? And, that's and that's probably what we're all struggling with, with this style, style, this style, this style. style. All a little bit different. Yeah. And trying to wrap uh, all, all of them up in a neat box and package. package. Is it's difficult, difficult. <clears throat> and, I, and I totally understand that. So, so maybe, maybe, so if, if you all wanted, wanted to approach it that, that way, um, what, what would be your, your top, top pick? pick? What, what village, village would you want, want to start, start with? with? Well, I think for this one, from a, commercial, <laughs> from, a, from a commercial perspective, I think we already said we're diving into the commercial. So we're kind of diving into the areas that are going to have similar function as, as what's being built in the downs. So. But, but it is that Dunstan, Dunstan, is it? Because Dunstan, Dunstan and Oak Hill, Hill is, is it a probably Oak Hill 
I'm not sure, sure what they call it, eight, eight corners, corners of the Northeast, whatever that North zone North is. Eight corners, there. yeah. yeah. Um, and, and Dunstan are kind of, we've already defined that in the prior, um, uh, uh, in our zoning documents, mm -hmm. um, as well as in the, um, the, the comp plan as being the commercial focus areas. Mm -hmm. um, the only one missing, I think, is the actual Route 1 corridor. Um, but, but there are, are other issues around the Rootland Quarter, including the fact that it crosses the marsh. So, so um, but, but I, I think, think we would, do, do, to me, it's Dunstan, Dunstan Oak Hill, Eight Corners, and downs, downtown, downtown are the, the four areas, areas that really become, become the commercial mixed use um, uh, focal points for commercial activity. John? John? Yeah, yeah, so, so I, I think sort of along, along the same way as what you're saying, except uh, to me, the, the downs, downs is, a, is a different part. It, it's it's yeah, going to be more dense than I think we're looking for elsewhere. We have, we have the, the town village center districts defined in a number of areas. There's one in Pine Point. There's uh, one potentially out by running the road. The eight corners, Dunstan. I think that's really where we're trying to encourage mixed use development is in those town village centers. And they're, they're not, I don't know that they're drastically different. Or what we're looking for is drastically different. I don't think it's a, a, a whole downtown that we're looking for in these areas. It's more a mix of uses that seem to blend and make sense with what's What's already, already there? Well, well but I think uh, when, when I, I look at what the town and village concept is, and I, I look at, for example, what currently exists at Oak Hill, or what currently has exploded in at eight corners, there's a divergence there. You've got, got a lot of big box development in eight, eight corners. You've got a lot of strip mall parking focused development in Oak Hill that no one really that satisfied with. Um, well, most people are that, that satisfied with. I just had a uh, few we merge two ideas because. Sure, yeah. So far, really, um, I think all of us are in agreement with what Peter is saying, except maybe the counselor. Um, but <laughs> I, I wonder if this review committee that we're talking about that will vet the innovation or the innovative building materials, that maybe that committee needs to be made up of someone from each district or each yeah. village area so that there can be a voice to each of the um you know, what to, to sort of think about the innovative styles, innovative building materials, whatever into there. I just I just don't want to pigeonhole us into one direction. I want us to be able to, to sort of honor our past, but look to the future as well and give every give a voice to each of these neighborhoods. I think if you look at the four that Peter identified and the five, John, what you just said about trying to bring things together in a thoughtful way. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I think that's it. I mean, I, I, style-wise, I, I, I don't think we're going to be inventing something entirely new. I don't think you could possibly make something in Scarborough because there's too much already here. I mean, make something from scratch here. So. Would it be helpful? Because my mind is talking about those areas. <laughs> Would it be helpful um, if we start this from, because uh, it's commercial districts, mixed use, that's the whole, like what we're talking about. Would it be helpful to see maps of where those pieces are, like where those things are actually allowed? So you can, because I'm not sure if we all are visualizing the same thing from the start, um, because I'm not visualizing the West or west of the turnpike in this discussion at all, right? And I'm not visualizing the coastal beach. I'm not visualizing, I'm visualizing Route 1 um, when I'm talking to you all about it. And I think we're all just, maybe that might be a better way to, if we kind of can figure out. I think when you say Route 1, for example, uh -huh. I visualize Dunstan, uh -huh. I visualize Oak Hill, mm -hmm. and those, those are very different visualizations in my mind. Um, you know, I don't think of those being designed similar. I don't think of those as being dense similar. They certainly weren't developed at the same times. And when they went through their development, the explosions were very different in the design periods and the history of the United States. Um, and then you have the one quarter. And the one quarter is environmentally a disaster. <laughs> and, um, and I worry about that. Um, then you've also got eight corners, which is its own monster of sort of 90s big box development. But where all the commercial, de like commercial development is active. Correct, yeah. exactly. Um, and, and where all that's going on. And then again, I keep coming back to the Downs. The Downs is a new version, like your point, it's already got standards, it's already on its own pathway. Mm -hmm. but, but those are four extraordinarily different visualizations. And I think, I think, I think getting a map for each one of those, maybe the Downs, the future state, but for the other three, the current state, 
um, would be helpful. And I feel like triangulating around the downs. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it is, it's sort of like here's the downs, and then there's Dunstan, Oak Hill, and eight corners around the downs. Yeah. So I'm almost feeling like it's it's the next layer. Let's, yep. let's see yeah. that as the next yeah. layer, maybe. But, to, there. but the, to your point, it is. The so goal is for those kind of sort of develop consistent, right? Is that what I've heard? That I mean, while they may be unique, there's some sort of. Uh, are they separate? Or well, they separate? Right. 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 Whether what, what, what that looks like in each area is something that happens. I heard industrial in Asia. Sure, that sure. Has sure. Um, others, others that have been here for a while. They right. right. have evolved. Right. Right. I don't. I don't, I don't know. We're trying to make a book off. We're just trying, trying to encourage them to use the system. So, so I'm, I'm saying he has to do that, but, but maybe, maybe for me, so, so that I can get my head wrapped around two things. things. Can, can you overlay the TVCs on top of that? So we can see how those. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that we, just, just so that, that we can see how. I'll just give you a map of where like mixed use and things like that happen. But if we were going to start with one of those, uh, because I feel like we have to keep things focused, right? So which which area would we start? Would it be Oak Hill, Dunstan? Which one are are eight corners? Which one? Can we can we do this? Can we take a homework assignment <laughs> and have folks get back to bottom? Can can you send out in a relatively Quick. Uh, okay, next week. That's, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. But I'm saying, you give us give us time so that we can respond to you okay. for our next gathering, and, and then you'll get our consensus as to what, what how we want. Well, and and that actually may um, change our tour because and we don't may. need to go look at the yeah. hotel in Portland if we're going to talk about Oak Hill, right? right? I mean, we that yeah. may. Um, so that will actually help me. Is that a, is that a good? Is everybody sort of on board with that? Alan is asking us to do is of those three areas. Tell us, tell her which one is the most important and why. Yes, yeah, so which, which one, one do we want to approach first as a committee? Okay. I, I would put in my my tips on on eight corners. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on there. In addition to the hotel, we just a uh, planning board. Uh, past um, uh, 10 building apartment complex. Uh, none such brewery wants to expand. Uh, Modern's parking lot is now will be home to a Starbucks. Two of us was attached to it. Uh, and then possibly a second building in the parking lot. And then that's pulling up a lot of the concrete in the asphalt and adding more permeable areas. So all of a sudden, this well, it's scattered. There's an awful lot of stuff going on there. Sure. There's some key vacant lots there, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How much time do you want to allocate to the tour? I know, I know you, you have, have a high stop, so I want to make sure we get Let's this. get there. Um, well, colors. I want you to think about colors, too, for homework. We, we have, have this. I'm abstaining because I'm colorblind. I know, I know. <laughs> so you're good. You do the with whatever we want. Everything's hot pink and lime green. <laughs> so like we could tell them anything and we would say fine. Exactly. <laughs> well, how, how, I, I, I would spend much time on colors, but you can't just throw colors out there. And put, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, can, can, would you describe him? Yeah. Thirty seconds or something like that. Sure. What colors Scarborough currently is? So, so well, well, what we permit right now are traditional, traditional colors, colors commonly found in New England villages. And, and my, my question, question is, is that, that earth, earth tones is, is you know, you know um, well, it, it sounds pretty earth tony to me, low reflectance. Uh, but what we also prohibit high intensity, high reflectance. We prohibit black as the primary color. Um, it's at like in those, those lime green. Moments. Um, so that's, that's what we have on the book right now. Seems pretty, pretty clear, but traditional may become like, like neutral, neutral or tones if we're comfortable. comfortable. You know, yeah. that might, might be where we go. The question I have is you know, you have your random um, fishing villages that have the, mm -hmm. the yellow yeah. houses, mm -hmm. and the blue houses, and stuff like that, which are traditional, traditional New England fishing yeah. villages, but right. you know, they're pretty colorful. Right. right. Yeah. 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 And so maybe that's a good, uh, maybe. maybe 
each district or each village, if you will, has its own color palette that's that permissible. Maybe. Like, yeah, you might have a different a different palette. So, so just <laughs> this is what we have for the whole um, all commercial right now on the books. I, I think that any palette we, we want, want to describe, if we want to say beachy, beachy is, is fine as long as we can, can have some kind of a description, description of what that actually is. Includes, yeah. So, so that our it doesn't leave it open for the different people's perspective. Well, because I'll tell you, I had an example at the city I was at previously. Um, they had a very bright red and aqua tile, and we had a very strong. You know, you know, red, red was, was only an accent, accent and you had to do the earth tones. tones. Yeah. And, and the architect is smart. This aqua is, is in the sky. sky. It is an earth tone. There you go. Right. Anyway, this, this is, is a good point, point but, but I'm going to need less of it. Less <laughs> 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 and, and they work with it. But, you know, I mean, you can kind of spin a lot of those things. So it is good to, yeah. to well, define it. Coral. I have no idea what coral looks like. I'm sad for you right now. That's a wonderful color. I'm going to suggest that we do a couple of other things and come back yeah. to the tour. If that's, that's okay. okay. Sure, sure. All right. So I'll, I'll ask for staff updates. So Ken Johnson, as I mentioned, is going to be our new voting member. Uh, we don't have any approved ordinances um, that you all have been a part of, but we do have some things in process. So the rate of growth ordinance. Uh, Karen and I are involved with the town council is going to have a workshop on that on February 15th and then you may all recall the two rod road discussion from last October the no through trucks posting um, there's a public hearing on that on February 15th and then Barry Road was something that was born out of that discussion it's just a one-way status maintaining the planning board approval from I believe 2007 that's a public hearing for 2015. And then from other committees, the sustainability committee heard a request from an applicant for fuel cell technology. Um, it's just sort of a, a way to provide more efficient power for a user. And then there's a bit of selling back to the grid. So, but it's a technology that is not permitted exactly right now. So we took it to the uh, sustainability committee and that'll go to ordinance committee. And then there's also a hotel motel, motel conversion ordinance that I worked on, I worked on the Housing Alliance, and that is going to go to the Ordinance Committee as well. And that's setting the framework up for um, motels in B2 to go into, to be transformed into multifamily if, if redeveloped, not a... So yeah. that's so, what so we have, and then our next meeting date is March 3rd, 3rd, and that right now we have slated for our tour. So. Is the hotel hotel uh, issue just with this? Is there a meeting on the horizon? Uh, there should be, uh, I'm hoping to get into the ordinance committee, committee next, next week. week. Uh, uh, some other things came up too, so I'm not sure if it'll be heard or it'll just be on the agenda, but I believe that meeting is on the 8th. Thank you. And, and, oh, sorry, when's the, you said the G, there's a, the GMO um, is having a public hearing or a public No, hearing. it's just a workshop with council on uh, February 15th. Is, is there going to be a report out or sort of a feedback from the survey that we filled out um, uh, about that? So I know I'm, I'm on a couple of committees and we're all kind of interested, but okay, we did went through this exercise. It's occurred to me back and forth. And you do get a report back that if you're interested in you, you are this. What we're doing with it or anything like that, or if and if there's not, I I'd reach my hand and ask for that for the various committees who did that. Oh, a consensus view from all of the other committees. Yeah, yeah just no, I mean I I haven't done that. Um, we're summer yeah for the workshop. I will tell you that there was a pretty strong every most of the committees, give or take a few, were pretty similar minded. Um, but no, I have not prepared that. I've been okay. trying to get the rest. Um, but I think. I'm just look at that in the presentation. Some of it, what we kind of public, public, what we heard. I think sort of thing. for the committee that participated in the process, mm -hmm. just to get a quick one yeah. or two pages saying, here's, here's what, what, here's what happened, here's what we drew from it. Thank you for your input. We will look to committees like this in the future for similar questions. This is a way to keep engaged with. Sure, that's a that's a great idea. Yeah. And they've been looking, uh, you know, the committee's been looking at a, a you know a lot of different types of of information in terms of uh, how they're coming up with some. Uh, suggestions. So I think 
I, I, I think there may be an overall yeah. like, like sheet mm -hmm. or a background report. Here are the things we looked at. That would be great because in, in, in part of it, I'm on uh, this video, obviously, but I'm on the zoning board and the library of trustees, two very, very different mm -hmm. boards. Which took a very different approach to because a lot of the questions were not relevant from one or the other committee. Sure. But we're interested, we're interested in to hear, you know, how, how does the planning board uh, um, uh, reply to this one? How does uh, the counselors reply to this one? And I think, yeah, yeah a white paper, something sort of put out that could be just yeah. presented yeah. a five minute item to each of the committees to, to say thank you for participating. Did you have something else, Karen? No. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Are there other topics? I um, just, just wanted to, to say we, we have to go down to um, the type of business list uh, questions, questions with regard to, um, you know, the outdoor storage, getting some feedback. Um, I have I get people till the 17th to be able to reply and uh, give us feedback, and they could do it in a couple of different ways. So, I just, I just want to make sure you knew that was that was underway and, and out and about. And, right. and you were testing the board. Absolutely. John? Does everybody know? I've got nothing new to bring. We adopted goals as a council last, last meeting. meeting. Uh, uh, some, some of them touched this meeting. Housing affordability. Updating the GMO. So um, we're, we're, we're kind of finding our feet right now. So, um, okay. And I intended, intended to print those goals, goals for you all, and I did not, so I will email you. you. Okay. Here, we got a public. Any uh, public want to comment? Nope, nope, there is no one from the public online. Oh, it's too cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's too cool. Uh, all right. Now I'll, I'll take us back, back to our tour. Okay. Here we are. So these are the topics that came up um, for the good and the not so good. I think I've captured most of them, but this is definitely subject to change based on what area, because I think if we pick an area, we want to go to that area first and really look at what we like, don't like, that sort of thing, and then find examples of what we feel or that style and that uh, we can incorporate some of those other elements from. So, I'd like to propose that we keep the not good on our list. <laughs> I'd really like all of us to sort of go and take a look at that. Yeah. The not good. So I'd like to keep those on there. And I think especially if it emerges that eight corners wants to be our focus <laughs> first, it's important that we ground ourselves. I, I agree with that. And, and what I think would be helpful is for, for, for each, each of those, those is, is, is again, having that checklist mm -hmm. of what, what am I thinking at? Right. Right. What, what do I want to observe? observe? Uh, is the Hilton the hotel you guys were talking about? I think it's the Hilton. The um, uh, it's the it's the one like right when you're first coming in the old. Yeah, I think it's the Hilton. And anyway, I, I'm not even I'm not sure it belongs on the good. I think it belongs on the controversy. And, and that's the I think that that's the whole reason that that was my suggestion is here's this example of something that people have very strong feelings about on either side of it, and that's always going to be. Let's, let's figure out, is that, that did, did it accomplish what, what the historic ordinance really intended, or is it, no, they needed more guidance and they didn't interpret things correctly. So I think we're all going to be confronted with that same, you know, it's like a Scandinavian design. Is there a way to make that fit? And that's the question. So that's, that's the thing. I, I observe about this one is we got a number of commercial areas and then we've got some very industrial areas and i think those are very different we, we, we want to have some industrial development we know that that's to have factories that are not necessarily going to be the new england vernacular um we'll probably take those off maybe for now we'll put, them in, a box. put them in a different we'll probably want to have some design standards for the industrial zones but they're going to be different than what we're talking about for yeah. encouraging this whole, yeah. this whole idea may be something we do as we do if we decide to go with this village approach well yeah. and then we go to the industrial and then we kind of yeah. look at it so, I, industrial uh -huh. areas because i think portland's done a good job for an industrial zone mm -hmm. but i wouldn't mean, think of applying that to dunstan right? Right. Right. right yeah, yeah. i think this list will definitely be subject to so do we leave the innovation I, district on because some I, people consider that an industrial i wouldn't i would consider it. it's a it's a flexible zone. It's across. That leads, yeah. I, I think we leave the innovation district on both from the materials and the architecture. Uh, 
it is now an apartment building yeah. in, in the innovation district, yeah. but it's a mixed use. But I think if you take well, off Riverside, the side of the industrial park, for example, I think both of those are true. Sure. 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 And hold them for later. Yeah, yeah. Hold them yeah, for sure. We'll group them together. Okay. Would that be considered residential as opposed to? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's just residential, just basic. Yeah. So yeah, let's. Once again, once we finalize where we want to go, we'll find you some better examples. Maybe yeah. we'll put them in the but we'll save the ideas for later approaches. So if we go to um, A corners, then we'll focus more on commercial and maybe we go to Westbrook. Maybe we go to way, And this comes up actually with the um, apartment development coming into eight corners. So that they come into eight corners. Um, I think um, yeah, I think the gateway is being sort of an obvious extension of the downs um, because you're across, across the street from Haggis Parkway. Mm -hmm. One of the entrances goes directly into the entrance designed to be going feeding into the retail zone and the, the um, I want to put the uh, uh, grocery store yeah, and, and all that. Um, so, and then one, one of the concerns I have with Gateway um, is, is, a, is an innovation. When we put these large apartment developments in place, um, we often do so, so without any localized amenities. There's no convenience store, there's no pub, there's no restaurant, etc. And that, that forces everybody into their cars to move to other zones or forces you to think carefully about siting of trails of pedestrian access into areas where they can buy stuff and eat stuff uh, uh, and, and then without, without getting into the car. So, so I think it's, it's worth asking, asking that question about gateway. gateway. In the context of how we cite large scale apartments in mixed use zones um, and what other things large scale um, multifamily development requires uh, to make them, if not mixed use, but at least quasi mixed use for them. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to have the gateway apartments on, on a mixed use conversation. Because I think it also, if we looked at Oak Hill, for example, you look at the Eastern Village. Eastern Village, Village has a bunch, bunch of roads, roads all of out, out of the um, on the, on the eastern road and ultimately a non uh, signal intersection on Black Road. road. And, and then none of them have any access, access to amenities within the Eastern Village. Mm -hmm. they, they have to go through maze roads, roads to get, get out, out, ultimately to take, take, take a big U turn and go to Oak Hill. That, that could have been thought of differently in a mixed use context if we thought of Oak Hill, Oak Hill District being more. Interconnected with amenities, interconnecting the, re, uh, the residential development in those areas with the amenities that are also in the areas. Mm -hmm. so Whatever the intent of the developer. Of course not. Yeah. 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 And, and, and sometimes a, a place like Gateway is built and that fosters the economic development around it. I mean, so it's a chicken in, in the egg. Yeah. Um, and when Gateway was originally planned, there were two. Uh, lots on either side of the highway that would be the commercial. That would be one was going to be a restaurant, and I've forgotten what the other was going to be. Uh, come the pandemic, yeah. uh, all of a sudden it became much more economically feasible for them to build two brand new buildings. Yeah. Um, and there was also going to be after Gateway came in an office building uh, in between Gateway and Payne Road. Mm -hmm. um, with a drive through coffee, coffee shop, shop which, <laughs> yeah, um, and because, because, again, because, because the population to drink coffee, coffee mm -hmm. was, it, was it at Gateway, Gateway but that's, that's probably dead now, I would imagine. It's been a while. Uh, so, it's looking at, at the siting of apartment building, I think. Uh, I think is is important because we need to take a look at what's around it, what the possibilities are, and again, it becomes the chicken and the egg. They must be room the the hotel plus Karen right near everything gallery. Yeah, yeah. I guess what I'm saying, and, and, and I hear but, but 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 you know you're right. In some cases, people people have to get into their cars. Until, until businesses decided is that not feasible to, to build something that will draw people. Yeah, and, 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 and um, I think the, the, our, our standards for, for what we have as principles can effectively strongly encourage, if not force developers to start thinking about citing what they normally don't do in May, which is um, putting 
first, first floor retail, retail or um, or restaurant, restaurant amenities in four story apartment buildings. Um, um, the, the types, types of things that go on and happen naturally in the urban districts, districts um, where mixed use is much more mm -hmm. common, but, but developers have, made, have not been heard about and had the incentives in the past to develop, develop the, 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 the skill of building and designing appropriately those types of developments. Mm -hmm. So, well, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I was just going to say, Peter, to that point for siting, it's really not a design standards. It's really about your zoning. No, exactly. And it's really about like if your zoning prohibits, say, on in that instance, having multifamily by itself just on Hygus, right? So maybe Hygus has an fronting on Hygus is only commercial or mixed use. And that you don't even get to the commercial design center's point because you're going to have mixed use or commercial. And so it, it's, it's all about, about zoning for those agree. things. We've we talked about that. Zoning is part of a big part of the discussion if we really want to encourage this use. And I don't want to lose sight of that. I think we we have we if you take a look at our zoning standards, mm -hmm. we don't have a great mixed use encouragement within those standards, even within the town village. Um, uh, we, yeah, we we permit it. Um, but we don't, so that you can permit something, but if you don't prohibit the thing that you don't want, that's the norm, that's, that's what you're getting at. And so it's, it has to be more prescriptive in what you say. We really, we don't encourage it, we want this. Correct. And that's that's the power of zoning. Which is power, which currently we don't use that power because we permit it. Stuff that we don't really want to continue to have happen, but it's what many developers typically have done and will continue to do unless we need to have a really hard, hard line approach. Yeah. I was just about to say, you know, we have this salt pump. We might want to do slash horizon because that also uses metal and stone and they're right next to each other. Horizon solutions. Yeah. Sure. So one of the things that I sort of got out thinking about um, between Peter's point and what Rachel had said about Starbucks, about Starbucks and you know developing in other in parking lot areas. I mean, when we, when got, we got that Starbucks, Starbucks application, I was so excited to see a parking area that is basically unused get used for a commercial use, basically. And we have Lowe's, Walmart, Martins on the not good list uh, for our tour or for the uh, committee's yeah, tour. But one thing I think that could be thought about in the design standards is what would the town want? Uh, these, these areas might not be lost and forgotten. Like if there's gonna be development in these parking areas, what would the town want that to look like um, in sort of the, sort of the grand, grand scheme of the Oak Hills or the eight corners or whatever it might be. And I and think, I think Rick, is, Rick, has Rick has been involved, involved in some of these conversations, at least with the, the Cabela's uh, folks who I think, I think originally had intended to build some, some other, other commercial properties, properties and uh, yeah. and they still they, they still want gateway. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Yes. So, so, so there, there are going to be some pretty, pretty tremendous opportunities in terms of um, development in these parking areas, and, and how uh, I, think I think that's, that's a really, really good opportunity for the town to kind of guide how it looks at that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, let me know when they want to build something in Costco parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. <laughs> well, we have that rapid transit system, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And before, before the meeting started, I uh, kind of to you, Autumn, that I'm going to be out of town for our next meeting, so I will not be on the bus. Uh, and ask you to provide addresses of buildings and and uh, I would suggest, not just so everybody can be in the same boat with me, but that before our next meeting, we actually individually sort of take the version of this tour so it's not something that comes as far as the police cam would be, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, whatever it's called. Well, if you could provide. Um, the architectural drawing is the next is the next gen of the apartment and the mixed use in the innovation district. Mm -hmm. So that you can see what that's going to look like right now. They can hide, but it's been approved for um, industrial on the ground floor and apartments on the second floor in innovation. So people can see what that sort of a concept would look like there. 
would, would those have been part of your last package or well, when they got approved? Yeah, yeah. that was that was yeah, back, back in November, November and December. December. Yeah, um, okay. Going through, um, I was actually going, going through uh, some of the other, other towns' approvals, and another, another big building, 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 even though it's in more of a residential area, is the, the um, I think it's Haloft, one, one building that was, was it's, it's 10, 10 units above and then down below. It's, I think it's the MR. Yeah, there's, you know, we tried to encourage them to keep doing that in other places, but uh, it was it did not work. Uh, the encouragement did not work. Because developers are they do buckets, they do things, right? They do this is what we do. We do single family, we do commercial, we do big box retail, and we do multifamily. And so leverage that popularity to what you want. But we also have limits on how many growth permits that you can have, and we also have some other restrictions, right? So we say we want I mean, just putting it out there. These are factual developer-driven things. Like, oh, cool, Scarborough has a mixed use. Scarborough will only let me have 50 building permits this year. How am I supposed to get this crazy idea of finance? And how many cool mom and pop brew pubs and coffee shops are there in coastal Maine? So, I mean, there's some, some realities with that. And I think um, I, 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 it's all, all the big picture. It really is. Being involved in commercial and residential real estate finance, the financing argument is not a bogus one. There are plenty of ways to, to, to finance um, uh, mixed use. I don't know a lot of them. They're, they're very straightforward. And, I, and, and that's and then having grown up in Southern Maine among a lot of developers, there's a lot of laziness in the thinking of developers. I don't think we as a town should incur. I'm sure. Hallelujah. Yeah, no, I, you're totally right. And, and, and so when you say that developers do this, you got to do it because they, they're They've, They've gotten, gotten the originality of the twin. Yeah. Um, we need to encourage them to have the originality of the branch. Or it's the branch. So it's a progression. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're who's here. And uh, they own the land for the most part. And we own the zone. 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 So it's So, yeah. You just got a hard stop. Yeah. I'm just wondering if there's opportunity for comment outside of this discussion. I just have a couple comments. I'd like to make outside the discussion. Go right ahead. You guys can keep, and I'll go. And Eric can. No, no, no. Oh, 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 okay, okay. Okay. Um, I just first of all would like to say thank you, Mr. Chair, for for taking over. I really appreciate your running your next meeting today. Well, thank you. And um, second is just a question for us to ponder until we get together again, or for the next time we get together again is, um. I wanted to thank um, Marvin Gates for, for bringing me into a clean water and, and uh, harbors commission meeting this past month where we're talking about um, some uh, potential water quality issues that are, that are popping up in the marsh. And it's exactly, I don't mean to be checking all these guys on, but, but I want to know when we consider any potential mitigation efforts for all the impervious area that we're building in the downs. Um, uh, historically, I'd like to just put in a plug that Angela Planchet <coughs> tried to submit it to the DEP a watershed management plan before the development started, and then the DEP would not submit it. So I, I know that she's thinking out in advance of all of these things, but as we think about what our brand is, and you know, Martin does that beautiful, like, close your eyes and you can picture Portland. When I close my eyes and picture Scarborough, I picture the marsh, the beaches, the nature, you know, yeah. those types of things. So, so let's, let's think about, about how we keep those and how we can keep those those natural systems healthy. For us, the natural, natural systems being healthy means natural systems being healthy. healthy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 30, 30, 30 seconds, seconds for anybody for else. else. See another chair with invitation in would yeah. yeah. Would anybody <laughs> Thank you all so much. Um, you said at hub. I'm assuming you mean out front. No, I mean at the um, parks. I will send you the address. That's where the bus will be.
Yeah, yeah. Community, community service. Community service. service. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Or is this? We'll yeah. have to do it as a formal meeting. Um, and then. Is there a way then for me to join at first? Okay. my favorite ones that I do. Oh.